Welcome. Uh, my name's Carl. I'll see that H. To welcome you all back to the world of mixed martial arts five. Today we're going to get started on a new series um, in the Global Verse mod, which basically just uh, restarts the world back to 1989, I think it is. So basically, you have to start again. And um, it's a it's a mod from the uh, Grey Dog software forums and someone's also created a load of new renders so you also see quite a few new faces as well but uh, let's get started create our new game now we'll be also putting this onto uh, YouTube and uh, I think I might also post it on the Grey Dog software um, forums uh, just to try and build up an audience. Now, uh, I know, I know, um, Sam, who I gave a shout out to in one of my other videos. I know he does quite a few, uh, I know his main live stream, in fact, is with this game. We're going to start our own series. I've already got a rough idea of uh, the company and that. I think we're going to be a, a Russian based company. I seen. I was going through the logos the other day and uh, I seen one I quite like so I think we'll be picking that. I think it's Red Star, um, Red Star Federation or something which fits perfectly, perfectly with the, uh, the 90s or the start of the 90s theme. So um, I can't remember. Uh, I, know, I know in the in the base base game, depending on where you start, and you're doing like a backyard to global game, you can actually start quite well. I mean, if you start in Japan, there's quite a few small pay per view companies, and you can get pay per view instantaneously and start making quite a bit of money. Where I'd say if you start like in the, in the UK or in the USA it can be quite hard to get that initial bit of money um. so yeah so sorry just adjusting my mic so um yeah once we get started in it, we'll um, we'll basically just be playing straight through, uh, starting the company, starting the first few events. Hopefully, managing to do the first few events today. Uh, I'm not quite used to streaming for quite long so far, um, so about maybe half an hour to an hour we'll do it, depending on how well we go. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Let's see if we've got anyone dressed in a suit. No, it might have to be a uh, Vandalin, whatever his name was then. Uh, um. <laughs> uh. Oh, actually, got a few Russians at the start. Don't have any non fires. Right, we'll have to go with uh, this guy then, or we'll just change his name. Oh, we said that. Vandalin now. So we'll, we'll be this guy for now. Uh, we should be able to start a company straight away, hopefully. See if we can set a face for it. No? Alright. Uh, in the bottom right here you can you can adjust your uh, user talents. You do get a base of 30 points. And uh, obviously 
you've got split 30 points between six things. Now you can also lucky dip, and lucky dip will assign like randomly the points. There is a chance you can get more than 30 points, which is often quite useful. And uh, other times there's a chance you'll get less than 30 points. So you might end up with like two threes and one five, and I've only used 11 points, and then that's it. But um, we do like to be brave, so we are going to lucky dip. So see, uh, if it's a lucky dip, it does come out rubbish. See, that's quite that's quite a good amount. So um, there's 20 points. So it's still got 31 points. Uh, matchmaking. If you if you click each one, it tells you. So we're a bit better at negotiating contracts. A bit better at scouting. Uh, quite good at matchmaking. So people will complain less. Uh, promotion. Um, which is probably the better one to have because it means your, your fights are rated higher or um, they're more interesting so more people want to watch them get bigger attendance more of a pay-per-view draw and obviously scouting and Silver Tongue I think Silver Tongue is uh, less money on induced which basically means if someone if you ask someone to take a short fight they'll, uh, they'll ask for more money but uh, that looks good enough anyway and uh, if you do do the lucky dip in it it's not good what you can do you can you can back out of this and your game's already loaded ready basically you just pick a new I'll pick the same person and redo the lucky dip but uh, this will be good for us so I enter his higher end or whatever his name is we're going to start unemployed yes we're ready to start starting on the 1st of January let's just see the date then 89 yes so it was 89 so uh, down here we've got employment opportunities. There's no company. So found a new company, shortlist and blacklist. Now if we look at the world rankings, I don't think there'll be anyone on it yet, so there's no fires. We go down to actual fires. I should, someone should start loading in. So you see here, we've already got quite a few. Uh, quite a few familiar names there as well. Obviously, most people start at zero. In fact, I think they all might start at zero. There's uh, a few different weight classes. So we'll just look at available weight classes to get a quick overview. Um, I think with the division I'm going for, we might end up with, um, I might end up trying going for super heavyweight, heavyweight, and uh, maybe light heavyweight, depending on the uh, uh, normal weight class, super heavyweight. Because uh, I've never actually ran on the super heavyweight division. See, there's only four of them here, so it's, it's not, it's not that interesting. It even looks like me. Uh, there's not that many people but to pick from. But in in the early games, you can also like join two divisions uh, as long as you don't go too low. I remember one of the, the promotions I created. I actually had. Um, I actually had like only three divisions with heavyweight and light heavyweight combined into like a cruiserweight basically, and then like middleweight and lightweight combined. So yeah, there's quite a few people there, so we we could definitely start with heavyweight. Maybe not. There's James Foster. We could uh, start with heavyweight because there's definitely enough people there. Uh, there's no women until about 1996, so if you start in a woman's promotion, it's not going to go very well for you from the start of this one. When it loads up, we'll uh, check what they have in light heavyweights. Well, for now, I think heavyweights are go to group. See, there's only a few people here. Enough to have one tournament anyway. Uh, I think we might go the uh, UFC route for um, our first two events where we have a massive tournament uh, for each division and then the winner faces off in the third event against the winner of the second event and all that. I think we'll go back now to uh, just check the middleweights. So yeah, there's quite a few there. So we'll come out of this now and we're going to start our uh, company. So we click on found new company. 
Here we go. Put the logo on and I'll show you our company. I think we're Red Star, I think. There you go, Red Star Combat. There's, there's loads of companies here. I mean, some of them are quite like, quite good. And obviously, if you are familiar with the game, then you'll recognise some of them. As being um, from the original original uh, database. So we're going to go ahead and start with Red Star. Where are they? Red Star. So we're going to start with Red Star, and we are going to be based in Ru Europe, uh, in Russia. Can I select Russia? Oh, there you go, Russia. Uh, I think we'll be in Moscow. Uh, so we're going to call Red Star Combat. Uh, short name I C. Uh, we'll be event driven. We were doing it numerically. Yeah, and we'll go rock hard. So we're going to start with minimal popularity and minimum money. And uh, we'll see how we go. Hopefully, it lasts longer than uh, the one episode or the one stream. Uh, we'll just look at our rules. Get the uh, company going. I know, I'm just going to go with the, the basic. Three times five minute rounds, five times five minute rounds. That matches. Uh, we'll put legal head strikes, legal knee strikes ahead of opponent. Opponent. Uh, we'll go legal stomps, legal soccer kicks to the body and the head. And then weight classes. I think we'll start with heavyweight, uh, light heavyweight, middleweight. Just to kick things off. Heavyweight. Steve just as many. What does it say? It's only effects. Oh, there you go. So heavyweight, apply that, save. Uh, we'll get the light heavyweight in. And then we'll get the middleweight. So we're gonna start off heavyweight for our first event. So we will save it now. Let's create a uh, great belts from all. We've started up our company now. Let's start combat. We only have 5,000 in the bank. So, uh, popularity or size, low level regional. So yeah, we only start with 15% popularity in Russia. And uh, the goal is obviously to get high level international, be the dominant company in the game. Uh, we just quickly check media, see what. Um, Broadcast companies there is at the start of the game. I don't know whether more open, open layer. Hopefully they do. Uh, there don't seem to be any, any Russia-based ones. I mean, there's one here that takes low-level regional subscription-based revenue model. So subscriptions based on how popular your uh, your uh, actual company is, as opposed to the fighters. So people will watch this. For the, uh, the content rather than the fighters. I'm just going to uh, go into the uh, filter here and see if we can actually get any deals. Uh, approach rule. Sports tube. So sports tube are basically YouTube, and they'll um, they'll host our content for free. Basically, it just allows you to get your uh, your uh, popularity up, so basically you just build free popularity across the, uh, the world. Uh, our current size means that we are restricted to hiring fighters based in either Russia, Europe or Asia, which is uh, well enough. Uh, we can also invite other fighters if we need to. Uh, we don't have any show schedules, so what we'll start doing then, we will start looking for fighters. So we change this back to heavyweight. can start uh, hiring new people. And obviously we have bugger our money so the, the aim at the start is to try and get uh, enough fighters that we can run an event whilst also spending the minimal amount of money. So if we go to we go to heavyweight um, we 
should be able to just uh, go straight on. We'll try and we'll try and get uh, Europeans out first, first of them. So if we um, you know, Bents here, lovely name. Negotiate with him. His uh, estimated value is 110 per fight. Uh, so we just do. 18 month contract for four fights and we will offer him $80 per fight for starting three with a signing bonus of 10. Oh, you can only offer a minimum of 100. But if we offer him 105. I get 110 minimum, which is bugger all anyway, but he's not happy with this either. I'll just offer a bit more. And uh, the good news is, because there's no one else, I don't think we'll be able to know, negotiate with Frank Analysis now. Uh, the good news is, because we're the only company as of yet, there'll be no one else from Sign Soft, they'll only sign for us. So, we'll just increase the amount of years and the amount of fights. Uh, 110 per fight. 25. So there you go. Next person, Gunnar Nielsen. Uh, so, so far we've got a freestyle wrestler, boxing. Uh, Gunnar Nielsen is a pit fighter. Same here. Uh, increase it to 18 months, four fights. So uh, at the start now we're just setting up basically. So we're trying to get as many as we can. Can't hire, hire a million. So three we can hire. So I might actually have to invite a few of these. So we got Manol Smasher Sirikov. Now we're negotiate with him. Oliver, so we should be able to get enough to at least do our our first first event. Uh, Good accounts it's Japan as opposed to uh, oh crikey, it's expensive as well. So quite a high level popularity in uh, Japan. Uh, Toronto, Canada, Cardiff, Wales. So uh, let's double check this. Uh, so we only got six people. Now we need eight to run a. Uh, we need eight to run a tournament. So the minimum amount of fights you need on the main card is four, but you're better off doing five. So what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll ask Stafford Allard to move closer, just so we can hire him, just so we have enough fighters. Basically, do our heavyweight tournament staff. And it, it is quite a cheap way of uh, getting fighters. Oops. Uh, so that'd be seven. So we get the other Wales guy, Mr. Saturday night, if we get him to come. As well. New base. Yep, and then either. And then if we get him to sign as well, then we should have our eight. And then once they all sign, we can plan our first uh, event and start hiring the next lot. So that should be the eight. Uh, yeah, that's eight. So that should be enough for our first event. Um, now if we just switch this to uh, light heavyweight for our next group then uh, 
and when I come back to it in a moment, I'll be able to uh, start playing. I'm also going to change the settings in a moment. Uh, change it to like heavyweight. Should change all these now. There you go. Uh, now let's change some of the settings. Uh, the mod actually advises uh, a few settings. So we're going to. Uh, regeneration it says turn regeneration off so um, it won't I oh, know that's wrong that sorry no uh, generate fighters generate fires needs to be disabled so um, what generate fighters will do it will notice that there's a lack of enough fighters per company or per area so what it will do is make new fighters to uh, balance that but because of this is because this is set in 1989 there's a load of fighters waiting to come in over the years over the months etc um, so disable that and you'll have enough fighters I, don't know, I mean there's thousands of fighters uh, we're going to set picture requirement to on so uh, we don't get any new fighters unless they've got a picture uh, we're going to change something else as well uh, stop for important emails yes shows to broadcast Uh, pre show analysis. Uh, no, 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 yeah. Uh, we're going to turn up a few of these as well. we'll. Turn them to medium. Just to make it a bit more exciting. We won't have local name, we won't have fancy booking. Uh, Street boom and bust. Uh, and then organic biographies. Yeah, got that enabled. So, uh, Yeah, so uh, we just increase the, um, the the randomness a bit. So there we go, it might be a bit more exciting. Uh, and now we've done with our first day. We've got our our decisions on the way. Eight, four, five, six, seven. Okay, sports tube. There is one of the uh, one of the bloody. One of the negotiations, so I do need another one. Uh, let's go back to fighters. We'll search this back to heavyweight. Oh, sorry there, mate. Um, I didn't notice you were on the uh, on the chat. Too bu too busy. Uh, too busy streaming. Welcome to the stream, uh, Kingsway Gamer. I see it's popping. Hopefully you're still there watching. It does say two viewers. But uh, I always seem to be, to be one of them. Uh, we're going to get Frank Analysis. Uh, do we want Frank Analysis? Is there anyone else? He looks quite interesting. Uh, the Ground Pound Jiu Jitsu. This is one of the uh, the renders, the new renders he made. So I guess we'll get Kurt All American Boy, Stonge. Yeah, so we're gonna t ask him to move base closer to. Uh, ask him to move to Russia, and then we're gonna get him to join our company. Oh crap! What yeah, I've done. I'm trying. I'm trying to like message someone back on the on the uh, stream chat there. Oh, crikey, 900. Sorry, mate. You can bugger off. Uh, yeah, we'll get. Uh, <laughs> just as Kurt Stonch to move, and then uh, um, as soon as waiting, told him bugger off. So instead, we'll get Frank analysis in. Negotiate with Frank analysis. Uh, so yeah, 18 months for four fights, £25 signing fee, 110 per fight. Yes, let's make that offer. Uh, and then let's get cracking. Let's finally advance. Good news is because there's a 
bugger all or or companies. The game will be uh, running super fast, and then eventually, oh look, there you go. Jeff Carter moves to Russia, so uh, we might actually see quite a few of them moving to Russia based on the fact that we're the only we're the only uh, company open. Uh, we're going to negotiate now. That we don't even have to cheat now. Offer him 25 for signing. And there we go. Now, as soon as we get our, uh, our first set of fires and our first event booked, we can look at making another. Oh, cranky, look, we've actually made 28. Actually made 28 uh, generic currency couldn't change this money. I can't remember whether you ever could. User preferences. No. I always have to start saying dollars instead then I guess. Uh, let's keep advancing. Now 26 minutes into the stream. There we go. So we've got four signees. That's like what a collective, collective hundred, hundred dollars spent. Uh, we've got a decision to make. We've got to negotiate with Sports Tube. Uh, we'll just go for six shows in a moment. Uh, what have we got? Four. Uh, what else we got in it? So we've got four, four, um, four fires so far. We'll keep going. Oh yeah, we'll be running the tournament when we get to it. Uh, we'll get to reality TV show eventually when we hit nationals, or oh, fame and all that stuff. So let's continue. So we've got four fires now. We need another four before we can book our first event. Oh. Social media in the uh, 1989s and uh, Gage Resigno has um, posted some anti white racist material. The Canadian is uh, taking a bit of flack at the moment. Racist, uh, racist Canadians. Uh, a black Canadian. Um, so yeah, so we'll see quite a bit of this, and uh, if if you do have a fire that uh, gets caught doing any controversial stuff, your credibility does go down. Uh, but the good news is that's not affecting us yet, and hopefully it doesn't affect us for a while. Now we're going to go ahead and get started and book our first event. Uh, we'll have to make sure. Make sure that. Um, That all our fighters are available. Uh, we'll go with week two so we don't have to wait that long, hopefully. Uh, make sure that everyone's available. Five, six, seven, eight. Yep, everyone's available. So we'll go on ahead and get started. We're going to start in Moscow, which is uh, probably a bad choice, really. Based on the fact that it's not very lucrative, but hey, we started in uh, Russia, so what do we expect? Uh, we're not going to bother drug testing anyone because we don't have the money so far. Uh, we can only run major shows, and uh, our marking level is medium, medium regional. So we're going to save that in. Uh, our next tournament will be number two, and then we're going to run a one-night tournament now. We're not going to do it for the uh, the belt or anything because uh, we may not last that long, but we will. Just put everyone in. Uh, Gunnar Nielsen, Neil Sturikov, Monty Oliver, Phil Pedigree, or Verdigree, sorry, I thought I said Pedigree, Staff for Lie, um, RSC for the name, uh, First Blood. So hopefully by the time we come to do event number three, we'll have another set of eight heavyweights. 
so we'll be able to run another tournament and then have the winner of both fight each other. Now the winner of this tournament will get a massive popularity boost based on winning three fights in a row. So uh, he'll be main eventing for us um, eventually. Now I don't think any of these are popular in this region. In fact I don't think anyone at all in the game will be popular in Russia. So the chances are we won't have many um, we won't have a big attendance or be getting a lot of money but hopefully we're able to uh, survive so we'll add this now yep and our one match tournament basically that's our event uh, now each event you run has to have a minimum of four fights and um, a few prelims uh, actually, it has a minimum of eight fights total four main four prelim now you can just run all four on the uh, you see there's less than eight total fights so if we run another fight or if we, if we manage to get another person in if, uh, I think we've got two fights coming in or is it just the one so if we manage to get another fighter in uh, we should be able to have him fight and then that will um, I mean we have 8 total fights because basically you need to have 8 fights per event uh, anything below that and you start suffering uh, critical and commercial ratings drop uh, so what we will do then we'll just hire another another heavyweight uh, we're going to search by uh, unemployed because we don't need to see half of these loads so, so far we're going for 32 minutes there we go uh, employment unemployed I don't want to go for Ricky Jawa get another striker in if we uh, ask him to uh, move to Russia oh no he's the uh, high popular one isn't he no we don't want him uh, MMA, Gukas, and Jiu Jitsu, Ground and Pound, Wrestling, Grappling, Catch Wrestling. There we go, Rick Stanley. He, uh, he's quite old as well, 28. He is a kickboxer, so we'll ask him to come. Ask him to move to Russia. Just up stakes, move from Russia. Move from uh, sunny Philadelphia. It's a nice Russia. Alright, there we go. Drop his uh, money. And then we'll uh, make it official. So when he eventually signs, we should have enough enough fighters to get our first event fully booked. And then what we'll do then is uh, we'll start hiring the second lot of people. The uh, light heavyweights, the middleweights, well we'll have to write both because there uh, we weren't enough light heavyweights, uh, so I'll see you here now, Mar Marihiro Fuki Fukijawa, or Fujikawa, let's move to Russia because there's only one, there's only one uh, martial arts company in the world so far, uh, no news, still no news, <laughs> There we go, Rick Stanley signs. So we'll be able to do that last match. Uh, add a fight. Rick Stanley versus Jeff Carlton. Uh, because they've got no popularity. We're going to have to pay him 250 uh, to get him on this fight, that's because I've set how oh, oh, soon I've set it. Uh, basically, he won't fight unless he's getting that money. So we will have to pay out two hundred and fifty dollars. Take us down to four grand, four and a half grand. Uh, that should be enough now. So what what I think we will do is uh, we will look at hiring hiring some. Um, 
some lightweights, some middleweights. So we can book our uh, our next event. Presumably, based on the fact that um, RSC one or Red Star Combat one will be a great success, which it probably won't be. Yeah, so there's only yeah, what's there? Well, that's enough to run one event, isn't it? As long as we invite them all. So what you could do is invite all of these people to um, to Russia, get them, get them started. We start with middleweight first, so. So what I could also do, I could probably put these all into uh, the heavyweight division as well, which you can do when there's not a lot of talent. You can probably just join two of the heavier divisions. There's also the the four super heavyweights. They might be able to move down. Um, if we look at super heavyweights, they could probably move down. Uh, so you see there, you can fight 258 to 278 pounds. Our weight class four heavyweight ends at 265. See there, you can only fight in super heavyweight. You can just about fight in heavyweight, and Viti Kirke can just about fight in heavyweight. So if uh, push, com push comes to shove, we can also chuck these in. Now, uh, if I switch it to middleweight, get some signings going, and then we can basically just zoom ahead to our um, first event. Popular in Russia, so uh, I don't think anyone's popular at all in this division. There don't seem to be any anyone from mainland Europe, so we're going to have to invite a few of them. Uh, but we may as well hire all of these, and then we can have our, our next event. Uh, asking to move to Russia. Of course, I'll move to Russia. Months, four fights, 120, 25 signing bit for signing bonus. Yes, come aboard. Uh, move down uh, to Karaoke, Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I'll ask him to move to to uh, Russia. Yep, he's happy to move to Russia. Good to hear. Get him signed. And then we'll be able to move on to um, our first event. Uh, so far, I've been streaming for almost 40 minutes. Yep, thank you very much. Fernando Amaro from Spain. I'll ask him to uh, move to Russia as well. Nice to see that everyone's so happy to. Like completely up and moved your life to Russia. I don't think I'd be uh, happy, especially not if I was getting paid hundred and ten dollars dollars for uh, getting punched in the head. And we have the master Greg Atfold, another American. I'm asking him to move. The reason I'm asking, having to ask everyone to move is because. Uh, <laughs> Been a bit silly. Decided to start a company in Russia, and uh, what would you know? Nobody wants to fight in Russia, or oh, there's, there's not enough Russian fighters yet. But um, once you hit like uh, national, you can start hiring people from elsewhere, and obviously once you hit international, you can hire anyone basically. Uh, it's just it's just to stop basically the top rate people coming over. Now. Uh, Asking people to move to your uh, your continent is quite is quite shady because uh, what you can do is all these big stars who work for other companies, as long as 
as long as they're not signed to another company, they will always say yes to moving towards uh, uh, to moving towards where your company is based. So it doesn't matter how popular they are in say America. If you ask them to move, they'll move as long as they're not signed to another company. So it's a, it's an easy way of getting some of the better fighters to uh, come and represent your company. But uh, you won't be you won't be um, stealing fighters from bigger companies unless they are in the same continent as you. Uh, yes, we get this uh, user as well. I'll ask him to come to Russia, come to the Soviet Union. Everything is great. Four people to well, four families to an house. I think as well, this, this time frame, eight nine is only two years before the Soviet Union collapsed. So you never know; it could be a uh, could be our company that caused it. Uh, let's get Ralph Puse, gorgeous. Don't know he's called him gorgeous. Must be his mother. He's from Scotland. Puse, uh, Ralph Baines from Norwich. Um, he, he's uh, he's active when you you start the main the main game, the uh, default universe. You fight for BCF. I think he's actually one of the champions. I remember him from my BCF game. Um, whilst we're as well, you cannot offer. Other contracts exclusive means they can only fight for you. Standard means they can fight for you and another company. But if they have a fight book with you, they can't fight anyone else until that fight is over. Exclusive non-fighter is for your um, your announcers basically, and obviously the same with standard. Uh, I don't think we need announcers for quite a while. Um, you can offer contracts up to ten years, but uh, doesn't mean they have to accept any all these different options so uh, the following bonus apply so every time they win they get double the amount of money so say if Rob Baines wins his first fight he'll get $220 for that fight uh, depending on where he is he'll get other bonuses so if you if you mean main events he gets an extra five percent if he's on the main show he gets an extra five percent etc etc uh, every fight goes up by two percent two point five percent so if he wins it goes up by two point five percent is a wage. Now, if I remember correctly, in the uh, world of mixed martial arts, free you used to be able to set that to plus and minus. So if they lost, their wages went down. If they won, their wages went up, which uh, was quite an alright way for when you had these um, these high popularity uh, fighters, but were, were quite rubbish and also passive prime, but they still got quite quite a lot of um, popularity. So they were good at drawing in the crowds, but obviously they weren't good enough to win. Any fights? Uh, we're going to ask Tanaka or Spirit Raw to uh, move close to us. Game to sign. Um, life wait 18 months. 25. Make offer. Uh, and then just the last one, Zako. Uh, we'll also get him to sign. Uh, Zako's moved his base closer, negotiate a contract with him. Now uh, I did I did uh, up the settings for random injuries and stuff so hopefully no one gets injured in the build up to to uh, our first event otherwise we're, at, we're uh, quite buggered. Uh, what we'll do now we'll skip forward a week so we'll go till next Saturday as many days Hopefully it goes quite quick because um, there's no other companies. Oh. Uh, so this is now I think my second week streaming. Uh, I only started last week. I think I've done three streams, uh, all based on World of Mixed Martial Arts. Oh, there we go. Did we get everyone? Yeah, we've got eleven. 
11 people signing for us check our finances uh, we, we, we've lost quite a money for marketing I don't know why on earth we spent so much marketing it's um, it's building up this fire here I see Dawn but I don't get why they I think they start marketing a month before don't they so if I check this uh, marketing level uh, oh crikey 10 grand per month uh, marketing does not begin until one, of, one month before the main event I think for our next event then we'll definitely <laughs> we'll definitely drop in that we might not make it out of this bloody month uh, let's skip forward to I'll tell you what we'll do we'll skip forward to our, our next show uh, actually we'll skip forward a week see if we last that's going to be a bad one isn't it I've not even made it to the first show and we've gone uh, gone bankrupt gosh that would be bad so yeah oh excuse me so as I was saying before uh, normally based on where you start your company it can be quite easy so if you start in oh gosh if you start we may as well uh, take out the bonuses as well so uh, Finances, estimates. Uh, might have to change this. Uh, the uh, <laughs> might have to change the uh, hype level down. I think ten thousand per event is a uh, quite ridiculous. But if we change that to advanced local, how much is that going to cost us? Six thousand per month, medium local. 4,000 per month uh, that should be enough we'll save that and what we'll do is just uh, skip two days to Monday see how much our first month has cost us and then skip to the event now uh, I've never actually been been a negative cash flow before and again I've always been quite successful on it uh, every new month every first day of the month brings a new gang of fighters so all these fighters have just uh, so there you got a Russian there all these people have just started their um, their martial arts, arts career, career. so the start of every month so we've got a new Italian here Heavyweight, so we'll keep boxer. So when it comes around to our next, next, uh, next uh, round of fights, we might actually have quite a few more. So you see, he's a super heavyweight, uh, but he can fight at the normal heavyweight division. Uh, we are week one, no. So yeah, we spent. We Short six grand that year, that uh, month. We did make a grand in sponsorship, luckily enough. So uh, we kept this event can't come quick enough. So uh, we're going to skip to our next show, which is, I believe, the, the Saturday week two. Finish our first show, and then uh, I think that might be it for this uh, this first stream. But, uh, but yeah. So based on where you start. Uh, company wise it can be quite easy to get started because if you start in Japan I think they have one of the uh, a pay per view company for tiny or very small regional groups so it can be quite easy to pick up a, a pay per view uh, contract or a television show now we've started in Russia where there's no coverage um, I think there's there'll be one or two one or two um, media companies so two and a half grand in the pot now hopefully this event's good enough uh, we just look at media uh, and look at the broadcasters so obviously 
It's still showing uh, the only companies that will listen to the offers we give them. So Sports Tube or YouTube, basically, it's just an internet company. Uh, do not generate revenue, but it offers out to the, uh, the whole world, so it can quickly build up your uh, your, um, your your fan base, basically. Uh, now there's free pay-per-view companies. You've got public access, which is in America and Canada. You have to be mid-level regional in America or Canada to have either of them. You've got Emperor Choice in Japan, which is low-level national, but just in Japan. And then you've got another American one. <laughs> now if we look at TV options that there is for Russia, uh, see, or oh, Russia and Europe, see if there's a possibility of us getting a... Uh, A um, TV deal, which is also help with money. Um, so we we'll go to revenue advertising. Should be a few more companies. Uh, so we've got another American one, another American one with uh, some of Europe, America Sports, uh, Australian Television, Canada Continental, which is uh, the British Isles in Europe. But we have to be a low level regional and a mid level in Europe to get that. So we're quite far off that. Uh, you've got a another American one. A Japanese National Pride in America. Uh, I imagine that's Quebec TV, which is uh, in Canada. Uh, South America, Central America. Uh, Europe. Well, America and Europe. You have uh, the BBC, which is British Isles, and then the British Isles secondary. So we might even have to create a broadcaster to be able to... Because um, you can create your own broadcaster, it just costs a lot of money, obviously. So uh, at the moment, we've only got a deal with Sports Tube, who are tiny, but say if we set everyone to small... Say it as an internet company, so it only costs two, two and a half million or two and a quarter million. Uh, if we create a pay per view company, it costs us eight million. If we create a subscription company, it costs us three million. Uh, well, we may as well move on to our, our main event of tonight. So, uh, nearly an hour in, and then uh, we're finally at our main event. So, let's, without, without further ado, let's get cracking. Uh, so our first fight of our first event is the Swedish Superman Gunnar Nielsen versus the Brixton Butcher Stafford Alloy. Um, now what I will do is uh, I'll play through the rounds, give give commentary. So uh, we have a kickboxer in uh, Stafford versus the pit fire of Gunnar Nielsen. First of the main fights, uh, three five minute rounds. Let's get going. Um, referee there, judges, round one begins, they touch gloves, jab from Nielsen lands, Alloy lands a big right hand, it's a hard straight right, Nielsen a few jabs, a few punches, uh, Alloy scores with a right hand, Alloy the striker, Nielsen going for the clinch, so uh, quite must be quite stronger than uh, Alloy to uh, push him to the cage, he might be going for the uh, Take down now. A few punches. Double cut. Got Nielsen using the clinch. Not doing much. The referee restarts him in the middle. Um, a take down attempt from Nielsen. Alloy manages to sprawl, stop him. Round one expires. Uh, a few strikes and a bit of a Bit of cuddling on the edge of the arena, quite a lot of strikes really. Uh, always good to see, and let's continue. So, Roy takes that round according to the uh, announcer. Nielsen goes for the takedown attempt, manages to get it. Uh, five seconds into round two, so this will probably be him winning this round. Uh, Roy is on the floor. Nielsen not doing much, doing a few punches from the top, just trying to stay busy. 
Referee makes him stand up. Uh, I start to slow down, running out of energy. Loy looking to strike. And then Nielsen going for the uh, the clinch. Wrestling the light against the cage. Final 60 seconds. Round two is brought to an end. Uh, so far, this fight hasn't been exciting, and obviously, the longer it goes on, the more energy it takes. Okay, Stafford Alloy didn't do anything that round. The uh, the longer the rounds take, and um, the the more the harder the fight. So, in a sense, as opposed to striking, uh, grappling on the floor, and uh, to doing takedowns, the tighter it gets. So, uh, when they get to later later fights, they'll be knackered uh, sooner in the fight. So, uh, Gunnar Nielsen takes that that round, so this should be equal now. So, odds play for in this third round. Oh, straight right from uh, Aloy, opens up a gash underneath the eye of Nielsen. Nielsen goes for the takedown, manages to get the takedown. Uh, Nielsen just uh, punching, doing a few small punches to Aloy, keeping on the floor. Referee makes him stand up again, Nielsen starting to slow down. Aloy slowing down. Big right hand. Another, another beauty of straight right. Uh, Aloy looking to come forward now. He knows he needs to uh, probably knock out uh, Gunnar Nielsen to win this round. A nice right hand. Uh, a big right hand. Aloy for a quick punch, don't land. Nielsen comes in and grabs the clinch. And there we go. Third round comes to an end. Gunnar Nielsen was cutting that round, took a few big punches. But uh, ultimately, not much happened. Uh, Gunnar Nielsen got the takedown as well. So, uh, according to the announcer, yeah, Aloy should have took that round. So, we'll go to the judges' decision now. The judges have their scores, which are about to be announced. All three judges score um, a 29 28, a unanimous decision for Stafford Aloy. Uh, Stafford Aloy books his uh, way into the next round. And our first fight is quite decent. Um, so yeah, Gunnar Nielsen obviously couldn't do enough with a takedown. Stafford Alloy wasn't strong enough to um, to knock out Nielsen. Despite being better at striking. Now when you run a tournament, you don't have uh, after fight interviews and stuff because uh, basically they just advance into the next round. You don't get an after fight interview until the final fight uh, of the tournament. So uh, they won't be saying much all the way through. Obviously our co main event tonight is the fight between Jeff Carlton and someone else. So after that fight, will there uh, interview and then obviously after the uh, the final? So uh, here we go. We have the the Russian Gavril Rochev versus uh, the Welshman Phil Verdigree. Boxing versus freestyle wrestling. Second of our uh, second of our opening fights. Opening bell. Touch gloves and they come together to strike. Um, just uh, both probing each other at the moment strikes. Roger already starting to slow down after a few punches. Only uh, two minutes into the first round. Oh gosh. Roger, uh, you're not doing too good. Probably only just started and he's already knackered. Cracky Verdigui also knackered as well. Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't see this going well for these two if they're uh, already knackered in the first first round. So well, that's the end of round, uh, round one. Bugger all up in that one. You got a few power punches. Phil Verde, great ball from knackered already. This is going to be a poorly poorly rated fight. Both of them just striking in the centre. Verde Green says the wrestler isn't doing much. Other than just breathing heavily. Uh, exchange fights. It's, it's, it's like two, uh, two knackered boxers just slugging it out. They don't seem to be doing much. Bit of dirty boxing. Clinch up against the cage. Uh, Verdigui definitely outstriking Rochev. And there we go, round two ends. <laughs> Rochev having thrown three punches. And uh, Verdigui having thrown 
26. It's definitely not looking good for her old Chiv. Oh, there we go. A strike's opened above the eye of Rochev. Um, more exchange of strikes. Third degree going for the clinch, pushing up um, Rochev up against the cage. Third degree hits him with a short uppercut. Knee strikes to the side of the ribs. Short uppercut again. Hard foot stomp. Uh, third degree just basically taking Rochev to town here with uh, strikes. Referee brings it back to centre despite quite a lot of action then, including elbow strikes, knee strikes and uh, all sorts. Verdigree again uses the clinch. Uh, Rocha basically just bugger all in this round, I'm going to get smashed in the face. And there we go, round three ends. Quite a dire fight really. 29 punches thrown in that round. A few, a few kicks, a few elbows and one knee. And uh, Verdigree should win this one comfortably. Yeah, all three rounds for uh, Phil Verdigree. Mr. Saturday Night advances his round into the semi final where he'll face Stafford Alloy. Uh, the fight was actually rated as being good, which is surprising. Phil Verdigree greatly out, out punching uh, Rochev. Rochev was uh, knackered in the first two minutes. Verdigree lasted about four before he was tired. So let's continue. Uh, we go to our third fight of the night, Frank Analysis versus Monty Oliver. Uh, we have Frank Analysis, who is a street fighter, and <laughs> Monty Oliver, who's a street brawler. So uh, this should be good. Both should come out swinging. It's like uh, the early early years of uh, UFC when it was Tank Abbott. Oh, Analysis goes for the trip takedown, doesn't work. Analysis manages just to. Uh, Push him up in the cage. Analysis looks for a takedown. Takedown successful. Analysis hits a vicious head, elbow strike to the head. Analysis tries to lock in an arm triangle. Oliver manages to, manages to break free of the submission. Another submission attempt. Doesn't allow it to be applied. Another submission attempt. Oliver uh, managing to escape all these submissions after taking quite a beating on the ground. Uh, five power strikes, so he, he took a good few punches, good few uh, strikes in the ground, and obviously managed to survive the uh, submission. Round two goes. Uh, analysis seems to be uh, taking um, taking the lead in this fight. Taking, taking the advice from his corner then. A massive right hook to the jaw and he's uh, knocked, um, knocked Oliver down to the fight. Moving quickly, he uh, crouches below Oliver, starts hammer down punches. Analysis taking mass, uh, an, oh, sorry, analysis uh, unloading massive punches. Oliver is getting pasted. The referee is forced to jump in and stop the fight. Frank analysis wins by TKO and we have our first finish of the night. Uh, Frank Analysis managed to book his place in the semi-finals in a quite a dominant, quite a dominant, um, quite a dominant match. You see there we have another, another case of a one fighter vastly outstriking the other. And uh, there we go, round round two finish. And uh, coming up to our last, last uh, opening tournament bout, we have Double D Bents Boulder. Did I say D then Double B? And uh, Manuel the Smasher Sirikov. When you're looking like he eats trucks for breakfast, uh, Bent's looking like he eats gingers for breakfast. There we go. We have a boxer versus a slugger. Massive weight advantage for Sirikov. Um, 77 inches, 77 inches. Same, same, uh, same reach advantage with the betting line going towards Sirikov to win. The uh, last semi final spot up for grabs. And uh, round one begins. Bordor, a great right hook. Bordor uh, taking the lead in strikes one minute into the round. Bordor starts to side already. But yeah, he 
still managing to uh, land the better strikes. Oh, he's already starting to push himself in his corner. Um, showing encouragements. Shotkin's also slowing down. So obviously these first few fighters are uh, a bit knackered uh, in the early years. Another right hook, and round one ends. Uh, double B, or striking. Uh, Sirikov there. Um, 16. 16 punches to 5. Uh, Bodo takes that round. Going to round 2. Bodo immediately is leading in strikes. Verge of exhaustion. exhaustion. Uh, Sirikov manages to get in the clinch, pushing him up against the cage. Knee to the thigh. Nice shot uppercut. Um, a few punches using his dirty boxing. Uh, the referee should probably split this up. They're not, they're not doing much. There we go. We split up. Fall into a clinch again. Both fighters knackered. And round two ends. So uh, you'll see this quite a lot in the early years. Uh, so there we go. A reversal around one. Throckin. Manages uh, the most punch, most of them coming from the clinch. Uh, so in the early years, you see this quite a bit where it's just one, uh, well, it's just both fires, both uh, tiring easily, both getting knackered. I suppose you, you can't uh, argue against it when you've got five minute rounds. I know the UFC didn't take five minute rounds until uh, quite late, like uh, 2000s. Uh, Bodo connects with a nice jab. Bodo looking, looking gassed. Uh, Sorokin manages to uh, control Bodo. Sorokin might steal this now. Obviously, um, nice few rights to the head. Nice shot right to the head. Sorokin might steal this with his uh, control in the clinch. Just gonna go on both legs. Sorokin manages to take down. Scrambling for a position, Shotkin's up first, Crooked Labs Borrowed too, getting back control. And so it's our face in round three expires. Um, Sorokin again dominating that round. I think Benz has just uh, left it all in round one, too tired. So uh, the judges have given the scores with Bart and Alps, and uh, all three judges score the contest as a 29 28 to Manuel Sirikov. Uh, so the winner by a unanimous decision is Manuel Smasher Surikov and the, he, he takes the last place in our um, tournament semi-final. The official result of this match, uh, Manuel Surikov defeats Double B uh, in round 3. Fighters rate has been great surprisingly. Uh, yeah. So now we should move into our first of our semi-final fights. We have the Brixton Butcher Stafford Alloy versus uh, Mr Saturday Night. Over a degree. Uh, both are strikers, kickboxing versus boxing. Uh, both have one now have one fight to their record, so uh, very good. Uh, Alloy is a much larger fighter, and two combatants meet in the centre and start to strike. <laughs> oh, Twenty seconds in, both fighters look spent and at close range, and they fall into into a clinch. Uh, Alloy uses dirty boxing to manage some, um, manage some punishment. Using the clinch, backs him up against the cage. A few punches. Third degree manages to get a cut under his eye from that elbow. Maybe he takes another knee strike. Um, Alloy's throwing elbows. More dirty boxing. Um, more punching. So these, this, uh, this fight will be quite strike heavy. Referee checks the cut. Doctor examines cut. And the, uh, that's all right. So we continue on. I just noticed that Stafford Law is uh, six foot five and Phil Phil Verdigris only five ten. 
81 inches strike. Uh, oh, crikey, 66 inches. So a massive reach advantage for um, Aloy. And uh, round one ends. And uh, not 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 too uh, prolific in striking, but not bad for a first round. Say both and Ackard. Round two, two good goals. Uh, they go into the clinch, both being knackered. Aloy manages to. Um, well, like Aloy looks to uh, to uh, take uh, control, being the heavier man and stronger. Fergie starts bleeding again. He uh, strikes re up on the cut. Aloy punishing him with some uh, dirty boxing. Fergie looks to be uh, coming back now. Landing quite a few counter shots. Aloy's a large gash in his forehead. Blood is starting to trickle down towards his eye. Left cross, Verdigu comes forward. It's a two counter left. Two punch combo. Should be getting excited now. They're stood in the, uh, the middle. Aloy gets the uh, clinch again. Pushes Verdigu up against the cage. <laughs> the remainder of the round is a dull stalemate. It's too exhausted. Fighter sticks to sloppy clinch and wait for the bell. So, um, both fighters just absolutely shattered. Pre uh, waiting for the uh, waiting for the bell, and uh, round three starts. Rodrigo coming straight into the pocket. Oh, you end up pushing him to the cage, checking the cuts on both fighters. Uh, both cuts pass, so uh, an evil fighter winning by a cut. The referee signals for the fight to continue. Left cross. Uh, Alloy goes for the takedown. Alloy manages to control it up on top. Oh no, he didn't. I missed that. I thought he said he managed to do it. No, uh, Verdigree managed to stop it. Verdigree now goes for the takedown. Alloy. Oh, they're just, just trading takedowns now. Verdigu goes for a takedown. Nope, doesn't get it. Aloy goes for a takedown. Nope, doesn't get it. Is Verdigu going to go for one? Oh no, Aloy goes back for the takedown. Verdigu blocks it. They go back to striking. Big left hand from uh, Verdigu. More striking. This, uh, this third round's dwindling to the end now. Oh, a cut, a cut has been reopened on Aloy's head. And the fight comes to around. Both fighters battered and bleeding. Um, not a prolific round in any sense. Verdigree gets that round, uh, and the judges. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good decision. Uh, two fighters, two wow. two of the judges. Sorry, rate the fight as 29-28. One fighter. One uh, judge, sorry, but it's 30 28. So um, the winner by unanimous decision is Stafford Alloy. So he books his place in the final and uh, manages to win over Phil Verdigree. Phil Verdigree, quite the underdog. And now we move into our second semi final. We have Frank Analysis, who uh, still the only fighter to win by TKO, was it? And obviously, so that can be won by decision. So Rock is a much larger fighter. The fight begins. Oh, analysis doesn't touch gloves. Drawing uh, some heat from the crowd. Uh, one, two from analysis first to land. Oh, so goes with a left cut. Oh, a cut straight away. A strike appears to have opened up a small gash underneath the eye of Sorokin. Sorokin looks entirely, uh, entirely knackered. Narcissus goes with a right cross that landed hard. It's a left hand, big right. Both looking to strike. Oh, Sorokin backs off days but alert enough to cover up. Analysis follows. After a good right hand, we might see another knockout. Sorokin is dropped by a big right hook. 
And now he starts pounding away again, looking to finish off. And Alice is on those with massive right hands of Sirotkin and again destroyed. And the referee has to step in to uh, save Sirokov. Sir uh, Frank Analysis gets another TKO victory. So far, he's the only one uh, managing TKOs. He might go into the last fight, actually. Better Stafford Lloyd being cut twice. Uh, Frank Analysis only having fought two round, well, three rounds total now, as opposed to uh, a low six. Now we have our core main event. We have the Pitbull, Rick Stanley versus Jeff the Rock Carlin. Uh, just take a break from the uh, tournament. Uh, we have Jeff the Rock Carlin, who's a ground pounder, and Rick Stanley, who's a kickboxer. Uh, Carlin much larger, 20 pounds. We're underway. Carlin looking to grapple straight away, but Stanley hoping to uh, keep the fight standing. Carlin goes in for a takedown. He gets the takedown straight away. Stanley's clearly hurt by a, nasty, a few nasty looking punches. Can't find a way past the guard. Referee stands him back up. Catches Carl with a low kick to the leg. Crunching right hook. Carl and um, Carl appears to have a quite, uh, quite a sore jaw at the moment. He's possibly broken. Hopefully not because that could uh, result in him. Been off for quite some time. Stanley hits the left hand. Stanley sort of just quit two punches, don't they? Carlin goes for the takedown. Two seconds left. He gets the takedown. Uh, but the round ends before he can manage to do anything. So, uh, Jeff Carlin quite strong on the ground. Two takedowns. Quite a lot of punch on the ground. But obviously, Rick Stanley. He looks a bit, it appears like he managed to break his jaw. Anyway. Stanley moves in close, looking to open up attack. Carlin scores a weak flip. Left hand jab, jab. Uh, Stanley uses a left jab, but the follow kick to the body misses. Lands a big right hand, no power. Carton uses the court leg to enable a takedown. He has the takedown, Stanley has to pull guard. Carton immediately drives him up in his cage, drops down, wraps leg up. Going for another takedown. Stanley desperate grabs the cage to block. Stanley gets a ref uh, verbal warning from the referee. No cage grabbing. Carlton uses a vicious foot stomp. Takes a sharp stomp to the foot. Carlton looks for a takedown. Oh, Stanley again grabbing the cage. Somehow the ref's not seen it though this time. Carlton goes for another takedown. And uh, Stanley gets his leg swept out under him. Halfway through the round. Carlton tries to lock in an arm triangle. Doesn't manage to get it. Carlton begins trying to get himself into the mount. Stanley gets um, rolled, gives up his back. Carlton goes for the rear naked choke. The rear naked choke is fully applied. Carlton has Stanley flattered out. There's no option to tap out. And uh, Jeff Carlton takes the victory by way of submission. The fight was rated as being fantastic. So we're uh, only our third finish for the fight tonight. Jeff Carlton, quite a, quite a strong takedown wise. Obviously, he's been a lot heavier as well. Certainly helped. He was a uh, was really active on the ground wise. But there we go. Our comment event is finished. Jeff the Rock Carlton defeats the Pitbull Rick Stanley by submission. The fight was really being fantastic. Now we have our first post-fight interview of the night. Jeff Carlton says he's delighted to win his MMA debut and he uh, feels great going forward. He has quite a lot of natural calm, so natural charisma. Uh, so that will result in him quickly being. Uh, uh, his popularity is shooting up. And now we have our final, our first event. We have the Brooks and Buckshire Stafford Lloyd versus Frank Analysis. Uh, obviously, main event of the night. We have uh, Stafford Lloyd, kickboxer, versus Frank Analysis, street fighter. Both 2 0 records, with Frank Analysis actually finishing two fights. As opposed to Stafford waiting for the, uh, the judge's decision. Lloyd's a good 30 pound heavier. But obviously that didn't help Surikov, and there we go. The two combines meet in the centre and start to strike. Analysis misses a big right hand, allowing Aloys to counter. Oh crikey, Analysis on rubbery legs, all of a sudden the last shot must have rattled him. He's covering up, trying to buy some time to cover. Analysis is dropped by a big right hook. Aloys sends his victory and starts to unload with punches. Aloys unloads with big right hands, lying several that clearly hurt Analysis. Aloys manage, tries to get himself in a mount. Loy almost gets him out, but Analysis books his hips and starts scrambling. So uh, it appears Analysis may have saved himself. Uh, getting mounted and pounded then. 
Uh, scramble lunge with a lie, grab a nice and shove an arm from the cage. Uh, lie hits on the knee straight to the ribs, the knee straight to the stomach, a stomp on the foot, knee straight to the side of the stomach, knee straight to the inside of his own knee. <laughs> a large knee him everywhere, the left to the side of the stomach. Um, and Artis eats a short uppercut. Referee uh, separates and brings back to the centre. Aloy looks exhausted. Uh, he seems to be the only one doing something so far. With Frank obviously being put on his ass early on. Uh, he can't with the right cross. Last shot moved on some damage. Analysis is backing off again. Analysis moves in for the Aloy moves in for the kill again. And Analysis goes down. Eli starts pounding on away and Alice is looking to finish him off. Uh, Eli fi fires away and, and Alice is clear by a couple of nasty punches. Eli launches right but just made them in the So Frank and Alice is again manages to survive. Uh, but we're knocked down twice in the first round. And uh, now he's on his back. Uh, Eli blocks analysis, tries to transition to guard. Eli launches with some rights but they dealt with comfortably. That's poor guard. And round one ends with a uh, massive damage being done to uh, Frank Analysis. 32 ground strikes, 7 ground strikes power, some knees, some kicks, well, a kick, power punches everywhere. Frank Analysis, well, he's not even thrown a successful punch yet, just seems to be defending. Uh, that was definitely maybe even a 10 8. I don't think Frank Analysis did anything. Uh, Staff of Life, heavy favourite. <coughs> Excuse me. Round two starts. Start striking again. Uh, Eli dodges a right hand and counters across with a vicious right cross. Al analysis is knocked down. Analysis again knocked down. Uh, Eli looking to finish off by raining down some punches. Pounds away with big, big hands, hitting himself big shots. But again, he just can't seem to finish analysis. Analysis, analysis has got some uh, staying power. I'm going to start calling him Frank now. Uh, analysis is a bit more mouthful. Uh, Frank tries to move guard, but Aloy doesn't allow it. Aloy pounds away, doesn't do much damage. Uh, Frank, Frank analysis is just surviving everything at the moment. Halfway through the round, Aloy tries to get the mount. Almost gets the mount, but the scramble results in a. Uh, was that a lie being underneath? A lie underneath analysis in north south position. Frank manages to get control. So now we've uh, we've got uh, Stafford Alloy on the bottom now with uh, Frank in main control. What round two expires with not much being done. So if we look at that, not much being done, stood up. Obviously the, the, the big punch from Stafford Lai managing to knock him down and then the rest of the round was spent on the ground. Our two expires. Uh, this is our main event, so we should have five five minute rounds. So this this could go on for quite some time, unless uh, Stafford Lai manages to finish him. So we're round three starts. Lai moves in closer. Lai throws a punch, two fights engage. Lai hits a, a great right hook. Commentator is now saying a lie is a massive reach advantage, which is what was that nine inches? Yeah, nine inch reach advantage. Frank's starting to breathe slow. Two fires engage. Analysis man misses a right hook and leaves himself to counter with a wicked right uppercut. Frank analysis is knocked down again. A lie moves in quickly, starting to hammer punches, pounding away. But again, Frank manages to survive. Almost knee strike to the ribs. Life fires away, and the is clearly hurt. Both hooks in. So Eli's got full mount here now. Time expires when it comes to the end of round three, just as Eli's got full mount. So again we have another round where uh, Frank and Alice is just being smashed and not being able to see anything do every time he, <laughs> every time he takes a punch, standing up he's knocked down. Uh, round four begins. Frank manages a sharp one two. Oh crikey. A right cross from uh, Stafford Alloy. 
looks to uh, stagger frank analysis allow me with the kill lands a huge right hand analysis knocked out cold so he finally did it couldn't manage uh, couldn't manage it when he knocked it down but he manages it in the fourth with a massive knockout and uh, Stafford Alloy takes a victory by a way knockout manages to get his first first finish fourth rounds in manages to win uh, the tournament of tonight our first event finishes with uh, Stafford Alloy defeating Frank Analysis with my throat so now all this talking uh, round four knockout fighters raid has been good so massive amounts of uh, strikes uh, we'll continue on to hear from Stafford Alloy now yeah thanks his friends his family his supporters and uh, we continue on now we're going to see what the damage is so uh, if you remember I think we're about was it two two thousand in debt? Um, and our first event successful. We have a critical rating of seventy six percent, but only a commercial rating of twenty six. Which oh crack, it's below low level regional, so we might actually lose popularity. Now the reason that has happened is because we've had no. We've we've not had a significant draw to this show, so these have all been unknowns. So uh, that's that's resulted in in um, in the fight in the uh, the event being quite low because because no one was popular in Russia it means there was no draw. <laughs> so like I thought, we've actually decreased the popularity in uh, in Russia, but gone up everywhere because everywhere else was zero percent anyway. So uh, our first fight finishes, our first event even. Stafford Alloy takes a knockout in the night. Fight of the night, submission of the night goes to Jeff Cowan, who beats Rick Stanley. Everyone gets ten dollars. Uh, they all go on happy. Uh, and there we go. Our first event finishes. Sorry, you're on knackered. Our first event finishes, and we take a total of twenty-nine thousand pound in profit, dollars, euros, whatever. Um, we received a gate of 20,000, sponsorship of 13,000, sold 2,000 in merchandise, and our fighters cost us 3,000. We also spent 3,000 in production. So, uh, overall, I think we don't have anything to worry about when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to worrying about money. Jeff Carlton did suffer a broken jaw. So, he'll now be out for quite a while. So yeah, he's now out for four months, so good job he's signed to an 80 month contract. And if we look at our finances, we're back on top. Lovely jubbly. Uh, the other bad thing to come out of that event was, of course, we lost uh, popularity. But if we look at Stafford Alloy now, he should be quite high. Uh, quite high popularity wise. So you see now he's a mid level regional worldwide. So he, he, he's gone up from, what, what was it? Uh, where are we? Russia. So increased by 30% since last fight. So he's now 45% in Russia. So 5 more percent and he'll be um, quite high. So now he'll be able to main event our fights for us. Uh, just going to drop a quick save there. Now, uh, thank you very much for watching. That is the end of our first first event. Uh, if you do watch this on the YouTube or rewatch it on stream, um, Glad to watch it. If you have any questions about the game, give us a shout. Uh, I've been Carl. I'll see you at H. Uh, thank you for watching our first event. Uh, Red Star Combat. And, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, so far we have no no champions. They'll come in, in the third, fourth, fifth event, whatever. Uh, next time, next time we're um, Next time we'll be recording, we'll be doing our second event featuring the middleweight division, uh, which will be the same. It'll be a tournament plus a few, plus a few uh, other fights, and uh, I look forward to it. So again, thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you in a while.